You may hear my dog in the background looking for a mouse, but that's just par for the course in this old house. That rhyme that should make a song of that. All right, anyways, I'm going to talk to you about the dungeon scene, and I'm going to show you a couple of final renders. So let's do that right now. Here's the first render that I want to show you of the completed scene. You can see the bricks that I created in Substance Designer. I talked about this in my last video. More bricks and more bricks and stuff at the back. I'm going to zoom in to 100% so you can see this. Um, there's a little bit of compositing, not very much, nothing special. I'll talk to you about that and some post-production. You'll also notice also that um, the bricks at the back are brown. Uh, I just decided to leave that. I was testing out an orangey brown color here and I thought it looked kind of neat for some reason anyhow. All right, so uh, this is the scene. We've got the arches. These were, uh, this is a, a wood texture from Substance Painter, very similar to the material that I had used for an old wooden door, just with a little bit of tweaking. Okay, so all of these arches, including the back one here, done the same way. We had talked about the trim here. I just decided to put these structures on. I had shown you how I created that up here uh, along the way to, to sort of create uh, uh, that, that interest uh, and that com commonality in the theme. And so, yeah, we've got that stuff. What we did is uh, we've got one lantern on the ground here. This one's tilted a little bit. Um, the lanterns differ just a little bit in the lighting. I'm going to be going in there and showing you that, but I made I made a couple of them slightly different color just to, I don't know, I thought it would be interesting and make some sense, but uh, we got some candles going in there, and I'm going to talk to you about that briefly. This wood material was created actually in Substance Designer, so there are three barrels, but the metal is just the same metal type stuff that I did there in Substance Designer. Of course, we got the hanging chains and we've got the spear here with the same wood as the arches and the same metal material there. And, uh, you know, I, as I was creating this uh, corridor, I was thinking uh, what would be there. Of course, we got the big cross at the back. So maybe this is a holy kind of a church. Uh, or some kind of spiritual uh, type thing. And I thought, you know, books would be a good idea along the way. So I've got this little place. Maybe you kneel down and you pray here. Or you'll read these books. And they're basically copied and just uh, changed their dimensions a little bit. And I colorized some of them. So that's why this looks a little purple. Because I didn't actually make a blue cover with different stripes. I took the original book and then I just, in Blender, uh, added... Uh, a note to, to change the color and so you you get this weird kind of thing it's uh but anyway so there's there's one view of it and i just have another one and i just wanted one from uh from a different perspective because that's really all there is uh to the scene we'll just zoom in here you can see the books a little bit a little bit more Okay, you can see that inside the lanterns, there's a candle. These are all the same candles, but uh, for the most part, for some of them, I changed the dimensions and I bent them a little bit um, and uh, so that they would look a little bit different, but sometimes they look similar. Uh, there is a physical wick in there, and we can talk about that a little bit, and candles at the back. Uh, there are bricks inside this thing here, and there's a green light just to give some kind of mystery to it. All right, so let's come over to Blender. We'll have a look at the scene. So here it is. These are the leaves, actually. And um, let's talk about lighting. There's, there, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you that there's anything special in here. Um, there are a number of lights, and I, I tried at one point. I was being pretty good about keeping everything in the in collections, and then I started adding more, and I, I just didn't. But I've got an area light back here. All right, slightly colored. And then I think in each corridor section, I've got a light, point lights. And for the, uh, for the, for the, the lanterns here, I'll just zoom in here and you can see again. So we've got just this, that's all it is, all right? This is a physical wick. And if I was to come in here and uh, look at the wick, let's say, 
Uh, you can see I've got wick. I'm going to come over to my shading tab. Let's get out of there and to there. And you can see here's my setup for the wick. Okay. Uh, I've got this, this texture here, a wave texture coming into the color ramp. And yeah, I've got a little gradient in here. Coming into an emission with the emission strength, transparent, and a layer weight into a mixed shader. And that's how I achieved uh, that glow on the, uh, on the wick itself. And then, of course, there's a glare, uh, a glare filter in the compositor, which I can look at uh, in a moment. So, in addition to that, I put a point light in each lantern. All right, and that's what gave me, that's what gave me that. So, if I just was to, uh, let's see, if I select that and just do this, let's see. Okay, there they are there. All right, and I guess I don't have one in the collection, but that's okay. So let's bring everything else back. So I did that for each lantern, but I didn't want this so, so bright. I wanted it at whatever level I got, 25. So then I put another point light on the side of each lantern, and that's what casts the glow onto the side as well. So you can see here, no, I won't zoom in too much on that one, you know, right there. And then this glow is partially from the lantern itself and partially from the point light there. So uh, I do have additional lights. I mean, that's one thing you need to remember too with lighting. You know, you want to say, okay, this is a dark scene. Uh, it doesn't have to actually be physically, if that's the right word, or optically all that dark to give the impression of a dark scene you got to have enough light or else you're not going to see anything so just by adding lights where it makes sense uh, you can get a better a better a better look and so you know down here i've got the candle but i've also got a light up here somewhere and i think i may have a point light there i've got the candle flame here and if i find that i can't really see the texture that well for the um for the barrel, then I'll, I'll have another point light there, or maybe over on the side, you know, just to simulate the, the light that would reflect if there's not enough in the actual scene. Um, so you just have to think about those things as you do this. Try not to make it too dark, and, you know, um, just put lights where, where it makes some sense. Now back here in this room, there's a light that illuminates the cross a little bit. There's, there's a spotlight back here. Let's have a look at the back here. First of all, we'll talk about this. There is a spotlight there, and uh, that's inside of a volume here that I've created. And there's another spotlight right here. All right, and that's what you see right here. So you can see sort of like the God Rays. I experimented a little bit with uh, texture on there and, and uh, different things in front of it, uh, but I just decided I liked it like this. To create some interest uh, and illuminate this area as if maybe there's a skylight somewhere in here or a stained glass window or something, that light is, is coming through to illuminate this area. And in addition, let's see, are there any other lights back here? Uh, there are some lights just again with the candles. I've got the candle flames, but I also have a point light because the emission itself was, was not enough. So point light for each candle. I've got a light back in there. That was the green light. And I've got the spotlight coming down on the cross and I've got this inside the volume. And um, let's see if I can have a, a look at that the volume here. That's all I had for that, I guess. All right, not too, not too impressive. Okay, the barrels are there, a piece of pottery, the candles with uh, different uh, orientations and different sizes, and some of them are bent a little bit. Could have done wax and all that, decided didn't want to do that. 
the uh, lantern on the ground, the chains that are broken. You saw that all before. And uh, I think that pretty much covers it. One book that was copied and just rotated around. And let's say if I take a look at this, I guess I joined everything together. Uh, book cover two, you can see here. I uh, let's, let's go to the books. Okay, I don't really want to zoom in and show you this, but I guess I will, as they probably don't look that good. They're actually all the same writing, Dungeon Monsters, Dungeon Monsters. And I just textured in Substance uh, Painter. I did one of them, and then I just, it, for, for each one, I did a hue saturation value just to change it for a little bit of, of difference. I didn't want to spend forever. So book cover four, book cover three, just it just changes here. And all of this stuff is just what you would get in regular Substance, substance Painter. And that is the books. Um, in terms of rendering, I just rendered, uh, I guess, in cycles. And I did it at 1400 by 1200. I usually put in uh, a couple of different cameras so I can just you know go into one and say okay i'm going to render there and and i'll copy it i'll make another one i'll render there and there wasn't really too many other good angles i didn't want to zoom right in on the books because i didn't think that would look very good and um so i'll do that and then um i don't have anything special uh in my settings really uh just the noise threshold whatever i don't even know what samples I did it just a hundred and I would render this and then once I render it uh, oh let's talk about the compositor uh, let's see okay so just in the compositor itself I just have um, a, a viewer node don't even really need that color balance I push it a little bit over to the blue and then I have a glare node and these are just the default values on fog and that gives you that bloom like effect around the the candle the candle flames and then what I would do once I would render it is I would take it into GIMP and in GIMP I would do three things unsharp mask at a relatively low setting colorize a little bit I usually push it a little bit to cyan and a little bit to yellow that's all I did and then curves this is already my render one so I don't want to overwrite this or anything but what I would generally do, I would just do three things. I would take the render from Blender, and I tend to use just a, just a JPEG. I don't even care. You know, this is just going to be viewed on my desktop. I'm not selling a print of it, so I don't care about just like a, a high, a relatively high-res JPEG. And I do three things: enhance, unsharp mask. I tend, I have a preset here. I would use this. You can see my values here. It's just a little bit of sharpening. I would do that, and then I would come over to colors, color balance, and I tend to just bring down the cyan a little bit and bring down yellow, depending on the image. This is what I did for this one. Now, it's not going to look good here because it's already been done. So I would apply that. And then finally, I would come over to curves. And what I generally do is I do almost like, like an S curve. I'll increase the... Uh, the highs and the lows now again it's a little bit too dark but that kind of curve like that is generally good enough and that's what I would do and then I would just file overwrite it as a JPEG and I would have the image that I want all right sorry actually just before I, I go out of GIMP one other cool thing that I like to sometimes do generally without textures i don't know how well it'll work here but let's have a look desaturize and i do i like to do this all right or we can try this and this one i like quite a bit so you know even without te textures this can look quite good uh with textures it looks even better it looks it looks like a cartoon so i i think that looks really good and then you can play with the the values or you could do this and then you can come into um let's say uh you can lower the brightness maybe or increase the contrast you know you can do stuff like that so i think that looks uh, really neat as well 
So that's it for the dungeon corridor scene. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make. It was a lot of work to make uh, and to do it on video as well. But I'm, I'm happy with the results. I've learned some things. I know some things that I need to do differently next time. So I hope you'll join me for the next series. I'm going to be practicing uh, with Substance Designer, get, uh, doing some more bricks. So we'll probably do some more castle stuff or some more brick stuff just to get that out there. And we'll move on with other Blender stuff. So... Thanks a lot for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.